Hi, everybody. Bob Niels once again. Uh, I want to kind of dive in now to HTML, your HTML form, and kind of review that with you a little bit. My hope is that you already know how to write an HTML form, but now, unlike what you did in HTML, we're going to make this form come to life and actually process it with PHP code. That's kind of the goal of this language. Uh, the one thing you'll notice in PHP, based upon where you go learn PHP and, and what resources you may use in regards to books or web tutorials and so on, there's a lot of different ways of going about this. Some people write PHP all in one page, uh, meaning their HTML and their PHP processing is all done in one PHP document, just one dot PHP document, I should say. Matter of fact, some people write it multiple different pages, meaning HTML pages, all in the same document. I find that to be very confusing, very unmaintainable, and also difficult to really understand what you're doing as you're trying to learn this language. So with that, we're, I'm going to teach you a little bit differently. Uh, I'm going to make sure you break this down a little bit and really truly understand what it is you're trying to do and why you're doing it. Later on in this course, we're going to take an attempt at understanding MVC, which is Model View and Controller. So my approach right now will lend us toward that particular discussion toward the end of this semester. And so I think you'll understand this a little bit better. Yes, we have to do a few more things to make it work the way I want it to work, but not too much, trust me. And I think you'll actually understand the language when it's all said and done. Okay. Anyway, with that said, this is an HTML form. Uh, we'll call this our payroll form. We're going to do a little payroll processing sample application for you. Uh, and with that, we have our simple HTML document. Everybody should know that, our title. And then we're actually getting down to the form page here as we actually do this, OK? Uh, for the most part, if I actually, let's see, let's run here. If I run this code, uh, we'll just do it in Chrome. Uh, it will come up to be a form just like this, okay? And so nothing that you shouldn't be too familiar with, with a submit button, all right? Let's get back to this then. Whoops. Let's get back to this. Uh, so what are we doing here? Well, we have our form, and we have our action. We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. We have our method, if you recall. We can either do a get method or a post method. We will always do a post method, okay? We have a table. Hopefully you remember your tables from... HTML time. If not, go back and review that. Uh, and we also have then uh, our, uh, our, our, our whole table piece here all the way through, okay, uh, where we have our name uh, and so on. And as you can see, I have no cascading style sheets associated with this. However, I want to ask you to utilize a cascading style sheet since that's what you were taught in HTML. Once again, you may want to go back and review that during these first couple weeks of the course. All right, so I kind of want to put all this together a little bit because we're going to play around with all these web uh, type things you've already learned from cascading style sheets to JavaScript to um, uh, obviously we're going to learn HTML and now we're going to learn PHP. We're going to get into a little bit of Ajax. Uh, we might get into a little bit of jQuery and so on to kind of put all these little web based things that you've been learning together. All right, kind of have some fun with that. Anyway, getting started with this once again. So we have this. We're going to have our input type submit. If you recall back when you did HTML, there's actually three different ways of, of uh, putting a button on your form, right? You can do it as an image. Uh, you can do it as an input type of button or input type of submit. Submit actually then submits the entire form to the web server. That's what submit's for. If you had it as a button, it would not submit it to a web server. You would, it would basically stay on the same page, maybe do something. We'll actually get into that a little bit next week or so uh, when we do some validation on this form to make sure all the data we're getting is good. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that, and then all of a sudden our button type will change because we're going to do some JavaScript to do some validation of our form. Does that make sense? But right now we're going to do button type submit, which immediately sends it to the web server. Remember that in my last video, that little picture I showed you? As soon as they submit it, it goes to a web server for processing, okay? What this form action is telling it to do is to go to a particular place on the web server. That's what this is saying. So even though this is going to be an HTML document that we're going to be starting off with, uh, I, what I want you to write is an HTML document 
based upon the forms process in the action, you're going to send it to a PHP document, a .php document to do the processing of that PHP. Does that make sense? So what this particular form saying is, go ahead and enter all your information, press submit. Once I press submit, it's going to do what's ever in the form action attribute, okay? which is saying, go to the web server and find the, ex uh, the file with the extension PHP called payroll processing. Payroll process, I should say, all right? Once it finds it, it will then go ahead and process that data or do whatever it is you wanna do, I guess, in regards to PHP and its logical language that we're gonna start getting into here in the next video. Does that make sense? Once again, if you don't understand forms, you don't understand tables, you don't understand cascading style sheets, or you need reviewing, go back to your course in, in HTML and do so. My recommendation is go to W3Schools, go to HTML tutorial, and kind of walk through it once again and refresh yourself. It's very, it's laid out very nicely where you can actually see the information on forms, see the information on tables, and so on. All right. Uh, I, I know some people may have forgot about that. <laughs> that may have been a few semesters ago or, or more, um, but I need you to go back and review that. I'm not going to teach you HTML again, but we're going to be using it heavily in this class. So make sure you take the time to go back and review that and understand. I have this example available to you in, uh, for this particular week under content. Uh, so you can kind of look at this one and uh, kind of make sure you understand what we're doing. For the most part, our forms probably won't get much more difficult than this other than adding a few more controls like radio buttons and check boxes and drop down buttons and so on. We will use all those controls in this class to show you how to actually process it. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're going to, uh, you'll have this HTML form, okay? You're, and you'll put this into your IXAMP or your WAMP server, whatever. This is what you're gonna execute. You'll, and once you execute it, you'll be able to fill in the data. You press submit. It will find the payroll processing.php extension file, which should be accompanying your .html file for this. And then go process it. And I'll show you how we go about processing it step by step and doing what we need to do to get you started for this week's assignments. All right.